Well, hello everyone and welcome to MAGFest The Aftermath. It is now Monday. Uh, MAGFest ended yesterday. Today is uh, January the 7th, 2019. Sitting back, taking a deep breath, and calmly looking at all of the awesomeness that I just experienced for 12 hours a day for three days straight. Now, Sunday, yesterday, I didn't really show anything of that because it was pretty much just a shutdown day. Uh, when I came in there, there was piles of luggage everywhere with all the people checking out of their hotel rooms, and that was about one o'clock in the afternoon. So Sunday was really just a half day, and I got to see the arcade room with all the lights on, all of that being dismantled, as well as the marketplace where all the indie game developers had had their displays set up, and the console room. Also, let me clarify that the on the first video when I said this is the console room, the console, that's what this is, this is the console room. I was looking at the map and I had the room switched a little bit. The room I was in was actually the marketplace where the indie developers were uh, showcasing their in develop or their new games and the uh, console room was actually not opened at that point and I didn't discover it until the last day and finally went in there and got to experience the console room and wow had a good time there I mean and like I said it was it was 12 hours straight each day and it, it wore me out but it was a good kind of war wore out uh, now, if I can think of it and be more prepared next year, I think I'm actually going to pack some food to eat while I'm walking around and get myself at least a little bit of a backpack going. And that hotel, the big hotel that the, uh, the convention was held at, had restaurants downstairs that were very nice. They even had a food truck that was selling walking tacos for like $9 a piece, which is actually not a bad price. Then if you just step out of the hotel, there's a nice street there with plenty of barbecue restaurants and little places for you to eat. But I didn't do that, not because it was expensive, but because I didn't want to take any time away from MAGFest. I didn't want to walk out there and, and go do that. I mentioned it a few times that the convention that I started going to in Atlanta called Dragon Con that I attended for like seven years straight and just had so much fun and that's that's where I, I got my first experience with, with a good geek convention at. Um, the last year that I attended Dragon Con I believe was 2014, it was either 13 or 14, and it had gotten to the point where uh, you just couldn't you couldn't move you could get to go, go to a panel an hour ahead of time and get in line and Still not be able to get in because there were like fire marshals that would count the number of people going in and once it reached a certain point they just cut the line off completely and It didn't matter if people started trickling out. They were not gonna let anybody else in and I missed out on a lot of panels and just had a miserable time at Dragon Con the last year that I went because it was just so bloated. But this convention, oh, it was like Dragon Con when it was fun. It was like Dragon Con back in the first few years that I went to it. You know, you could say on a whim, oh, this panel has already started, but I'm going to go in there anyway. And you wouldn't get stopped at the door by some fluorescent vest wearing hot belly putting his hand up saying, no, you can't go in. You could just go in. You could just go in. <laughs> Even the question and answer sessions, when people would line up to the microphone, uh, they could answer all of them. Sometimes they would have to have a lightning round where they would give the, like, the last five people a one, uh, one or two sentence answers. But they were getting to all of the questions. And it wasn't, you know, everybody was telling me that on Saturday it's going to be a mosh pit in there. I went in there on Saturday. It was not. It was fun. It was still manageable. <sighs> so. Am I going to be back here again next year? If I can, yes. I will definitely come back to this one next year. I will be more prepared. It was great, wow. Uh, their organization, organizing of the events and the tournaments and the panels and all of that, excellent. Done really well. Uh, this idea of having all of the events on a single page 
it actually turned out to be a lot more uh, easier to manage than the booklet because you didn't have to flip pages. You could just go here, you could, you know, find the day that you were at, scroll on down, you know, find the, whatever time it is, and then start reading uh, the the names of the tournaments and panels and stuff. And then right next to it is the the name of the room that it's going to be at, and they had maps all over the place and really helpful information desk and you had no trouble at all getting to whatever panel that you wanted to get to in a timely manner really well done there uh, if there's one nitpick I would I would do I would I would say is that this is all the description that each one of these these events is given it's like you know two and a half inches just a few words so if you wanted a more in-depth description of whatever this was then you had to download an app and uh, the app was easy to download and it was easy to search through and find what you needed but the only problem was in order to access that you had to have uh, internet and most of us are not getting internet from the hotel Wi-Fi I don't think that would even be possible to spread the Wi-Fi out among the thousands of people there so I was getting my internet through the 4G connection on my cell phone and a lot of these events were held inside of a big building you know with a big metal roof and all that kind of stuff all that stuff that completely cuts you off from your 4G so if I wasn't by a door or a window or somewhere I could get the 4G then I just could simply not look up the description of the panel I wanted to go to so uh, I would have to walk all the way downstairs and whatnot and go through some doors and finally get the connection then read the description of the of the panel and then walk all the way back so I think they were overthinking it trying to make this an app just really making it too complicated uh, it would have been a lot easier if they had just made it a downloadable PDF from the website uh, that you could just you know scroll through and you could just download it you know to your phone's memory and just scroll through it at your leisure and you wouldn't have to have a internet connection to do it that would have been a lot easier a lot more manageable so I wish they had done that also second nitpick and this goes for the people going to MAGFest the Colossus Roar it's done it's over dead meme stop you're a bunch of grown men going to a convention and screaming to, to the top of your lungs down hallways over and over again. It's not cool anymore. Stop it. And now the pickups from the dealer's room, starting with a GameCube. I got Reckless, uh, the Yakuza Mission for the GameCube. I don't think I'd ever seen this before and it was only five dollars and as you can see it's kind of a mafia style uh, driving game I'm sure you probably do a lot of getaways and like hits and stuff as a mafia driver uh, and then Dead Man's Hand for the original Xbox it's a first-person shooter with an Old West theme I have a soft spot for this kind of game ever since I've played through Red Dead Revolver actually a couple of times and I really liked uh, Gun and those so <laughs> Uh, also, I got uh, Shinmu 2 once again. Some of you might remember when I was in, uh, uh, did the Blueberry Festival over there. I think it was in North Carolina. I got a copy of this there. Um, but the one that I had was a little janky. It had some uh, some glitches, and then I had to have the the disc resurfaced. But then when I found this, and it was for only twelve. Uh, well, it says what's thirteen, twelve ninety nine, but I was able to get the price reduced uh, like a few more dollars because it was a package deal. But I really wanted this one because it came with the DVD. The other one didn't come with the DVD. I don't think it even had the uh, the manual. So this one is in perfect condition and totally complete for only like I want to say ten dollars. So yeah, I got it again. Now I have a spare. We'll call it a spare. Uh, then we got We Play Motion, of course, for the Nintendo Wii. Uh, this is another one of those motion-based party games that was trying to be a follow-up to Wii Sports. Nothing ever quite met the success of Wii Sports, but Wii Motion, We Play Motion, uh, was one of the lesser-known ones and still fun. And uh, I got that one on the last day on the fire sale, so took $3 off of it. Uh, then we got Winter Blade, and it advertises 
nine snow and ice games, nine games, and you know he has the uh, the balancing board up here. So it's like so player versus player type games that includes the balancing board, which always makes for a nice fun party time. And then we got Squee Balls, Squee Balls Party, again for the Wii U. I guess I'm, I'm just now realizing it. I, I bought a lot of party games for the Wii. Of course, the Wii was like tailor-made for party games, but this is a party game I didn't have yet. And again, it was on the buy two get one free sale in the last day. And uh, I like the way it looked. I like its condition and all that. Ah, now this one I I got on the first day, and it was the find of the day. Uh, if you guys remember just a few months ago when I completed the orange box for the 360 and I had completed all of Half-Life 2, all of the, um, the add-ons, the extra DLC that was included on Orange Box, and I was just like crushed because I didn't get to see the end of it, you know? They, they never made uh, part three. But look at this, guys. I have actually not played all of Half-Life. There was a console release for the first one. I thought this was PC only. I didn't think there was a console release for the original Half-Life, but I found it. <sighs> and so now I'm going to get to play uh, the Half-Life that came before that awesome Half-Life 2, and it's a uh, black disc. Um, and when you see them like this, for the PS2, that means early release. It was early in the life of the PlayStation 2 and kind of rare. Uh, so, and also a lot easier to scratch, so be careful with the, the black bottom discs. Uh, so, I, I this disc I'm just really excited about. I, I get to play more Half-Life and I get to see how that story starts now, so that's, that's gonna be great. And then I got Frogger uh, Ancient Shadow which I, I've gotten a lot of the Frogger games. Some of you guys out there would be surprised if you knew the extent of the Frogger series, how many they made for the PlayStation 2 kind of um, GameCube generation. Man, there was a bunch of them. And uh, this is one that I didn't have yet. And it looks like they're including a lot of the original type of gameplay into these levels. So I like that, you know, some, some good upgrading of the levels and adding depth to the world. And uh, so that, again, only $5. So that's all. Going on to handheld, I got uh, Montezuma's Revenge for the Game Boy Color. Uh, yeah, make all the diarrhea jokes you want to about it. I wanted to get this because I looked up some of the gameplay. It looked like a fun little 8-bit uh, platformer. And also, I'm pretty sure that Montezuma's Revenge was originally on the Atari 2600, and this is like an updated version of it. And I like when developers take old Atari games and upgrade them. I think, you know, it, it, I love that. So uh, I'm gonna make, be making episodes eventually on my channel when I can get the facility to do so, where I take old Atari games and compare them with their up, updates and see how they hold up. And so now I've got this one that I can use to make one of those. Then I got three puzzle games for the original Game Boy, uh, starting with Flip Ool. Flipool. <laughs> uh, I'd never seen this before, and I got it for $2.50. Uh, and it's actually a pretty good one. Um, it's a, a match shapes kind of puzzle game where you know it speeds up and it and it gets really intense. So that's awesome. And then there's Boulder Dash, and this was a game that goes as far back as like the Amiga. Uh, Boulder Dash is a series that has had ports on. The Nintendo, the, the Game Boy, uh, tons of them. I've got some compilation disc for the PlayStation 2 that has some Boulder Dashes added to it. Now I have the Game Boy, original Game Boy version as well. And it's one where you kind of like, you're, you're, you're digging out levels underneath boulders and you have to get out from underneath them as they fall and try to get them to fall on the enemies and get to certain areas without getting smashed. And it's a puzzle game, really good puzzle game. Um, as is a Dexterity. Dexterity is a block pushing puzzle game, so um, that one looked like fun too. And again, only 250. Then I got Star Tropics 2. Did you guys know that Star Tropics had a sequel? It did. 
it had a sequel and it's actually not bad. I looked up some game reviews on it. Uh, of course, it doesn't meet, meet the level of the original, but uh, some of the combat options get a little more in-depth than the original, and your jumping mechanics are a little more, um, I don't know, free will, where you can jump different distances and different angles, and you know, it's a little more, a little more wide open. Uh, so that, that one's gonna be fun to play. Now I own, now I own both of them. Uh, and so, let's go on to, I got one Atari game. This one is called Target Fun. And I don't think I had, I had this before. And I, I saw a video, uh, was entitled Atari Games That Still Hold Up. And, and this, if I remember right, was one of them. And it was only $3. And then um, I got a couple of original PlayStation games. Uh, just because I had never seen them before. Uh, one is called Ball Blazers. It's a arena style combat racer. It looks like a futuristic style twisted metal. So that would be fun to play, especially if you have some people to play it with. And of course, Dexter's Laboratory. I wouldn't have got this if not for these pictures on the back. The pictures on the back show uh, a good variety in level design. This, you know, we've got a race racer here and then a rhythm game there and something else in the middle here. I'm not sure what that is, um, but with a good variety like that, you know, why not? And you hardly ever see it. Um, and then I got Untold Legends. This one's called The Brotherhood of Blades. Now, I actually already own this, uh, but I was having so much fun playing it because it's actually pretty close to Champions of Norath. It's not as good, of course. Not going to be as good as Champions of Norath, but it's close. And so I wanted it complete. And also, uh, this finally answered that question of why does it say Disc 1? See right there, it says Disc 1. Am I pointing at Yeah, right there. See where it says Disc 1? I, I had that on the loose disc, and I kept looking at it going, why does it say Disc 1? It, it only sold me one disc. Um, so I wanted to find it complete so that, you know, I could, if there was going to be two discs, they would be like side by side. But it's complete. There is no second disc. I don't know why it says that. I guess it's disc one of one. But uh, now the question is answered. The entire game is, in fact, on one disc. So there we are. That was all my pickups from the dealer's room. Probably spent a little bit more than I should, but I got some good deals on these, and I know that I'm eventually going to play at least most of them. And so that's it for this one today, guys. Uh, it's time for me to put my MAGFest 2019 badge up here on the memories wall, right next to the movie ticket for Smallfoot. <laughs> uh, hopefully I'll start getting this wall filled up a little bit faster. Uh, there we go guys, uh, don't forget to go ahead and smash that thumbs up like button, leave comments, questions, suggestions, and requests, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell icon to become part of the notification squad, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.